Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. What city are we in right now? Chicago, right? Chicago, right? Yeah. And again, is there an issue with crime and violence in the black and Hispanic community in Chicago? It, yeah, right? A big issue. A big issue. What about if you go to New York? Is there the same issue there? Everywhere. Everywhere. So these curses will follow us everywhere we go. So it's not a coincidence. If you go to Chicago, LA, New York, Philadelphia, Miami, Louisiana, New Orleans, it's no coincidence. Because we are the people of this Bible. That's how we know who we are. We go anywhere on Martin Luther King Drive. A street that was named after the man who fought for the rights of our people. You go to Martin Luther King Street in Louisiana, in Los Angeles, in New York. Guess what? It's going to be the same issue going on on that same street. That's right. Why? Because these curses will follow us everywhere because we didn't listen to God. Right. So again, how did we come to this point, channel slavery? Because a result of channel slavery is what you see right here today. That's right. A result of this is a result of what you see today. Liquor stores, gangs, violence. That's right. Because we don't know who we are as a people. Get that Deuteronomy 2815. Because remember, where there's no vision, our people perish. Because there's no pride to being a black. Because black is your shirt. There's no pride to being American. Because even in America, we don't have rights as Americans. Even today, we're still three-fourths three of a man. Matter of fact, the irony in that, you had a black president, Barack Obama. Who knows who Barack Obama is, right? We had a black man that ran the free world here. And you still have laws on the books associated with slavery. But you would have thought as a black man, he would have took those laws off the book. You would have thought he would have took the three-fifth law off the book. That law was still in there. Let you know today we are still captive. We are still three-fourths of a man. That's right. You know. Three-fourths of anything is not a whole of nothing. We had a black man in the president, but that law was still in the book. So yeah, after all, we're not free. Even after Barack Obama, we had Donald Trump. Even after Donald Trump, we had Joe Biden. We thought it was going to be hope for our people after Joe Biden. Did you vote? Well, you ain't got to answer that. Our people vote, though, because our, po our people vote in the sense of hope, but we never get that hope. Where's the change at? How long we been voting as Americans? Over 20 years. Over 20 years? Over 200 years? Okay, long enough. How long have we been voting as a people? Where's the change? We've seen it. Barack said yes he can, but he didn't do nothing. Right. Donald Trump said make America great again, but for who? Not for you? Not for you? It's only meant to be great for the white man. That's right. Did you know? I'm going to give you some history. We're going to go to the scriptures. But I got to bring you back to the scriptures. Do you know that the Second Amendment right is the right to bear arms? But the purpose behind the Second Amendment right to bear arms was for white men to defend themselves against slave rebellions. But, supposed to be but yeah, we think we, we think we able to uh, capitalize on Second Amendment rights, which never had nothing to do with us. The reason we had Second Amendment rights was so white men could arm themselves and defend themselves against brothers and sisters like us who are enslaved, who are still captive. Because we, we think, you know, because we, we know that it's wrong to be in shackles and chains. What if someone walked right up right now and put you in shackles and chains right now? What if someone came and put you in shackles and chains right now? How would you feel? You'll feel bad. You'll feel bad. But at one point, we tried to up, overcome and rise up. But that's why the Second Amendment right came in, so white men can aid themselves and defend themselves against the oppression of slave rebellions. That's why you have brothers like Fernando Castillo could get killed and be a concealed carry owner, to be a lawful gun owner, and still get shot, because that law never applied to him. Let's get the scriptures now. Deuteronomy 28, 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. It but it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe 
to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Read again. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. So it's going to happen during the time of Moses. Because Moses, the first time, historically delivered our people out of Egypt. Right. Because, yes, you have black people in Egypt. But there is a difference between the Israelites and the Africans, the Nilote Africans. We built Egypt. Just like we built America. We always build every kingdom. Can no kingdom be no kingdom without our people in it. Right. America is the way it is because our people built it. Right. We fight their wars. Right. We you we we spend commerce every year. We make this country rich. Think about Christmas, right? And Black Friday. Our people spend billions of dollars on a fake holiday that has nothing to do with the truth at all. I ask you, Santa Claus, right? Our people on behalf of Santa Claus spend billions of dollars and make this country rich. But Santa Claus is a lie. So we feed this economy. We built this economy off of free labor. Just like we did in Egypt, we did it in America. Read on. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And all we had to do was listen to the Most High God. Because we do have a God. This here is not the true God. Because when you read the scriptures, you read the same book that our people want to say is a white man's book. The same book states that Christ is a black man. Christ looks just like you. Christ looks just like you. Christ is a black man. He only came for the blacks and Hispanics. That's right. But you're not going to learn that in the church. But all we got to do is listen to God. Read on. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses will come upon us and overtake us as a people if we didn't keep the commandments. Does anybody have children? You got children? So if your children, if you tell your children to clean their room and they don't do it, what's going to happen? Well, there's some kind of reward for clean and some kind of punishment for not. And that's pretty much what God said. It's going to be curses that are going to come upon our people. That's a punishment. A curse is a punishment. Right. All because why? We didn't do what God say. So let's get some of these curses. Bring it out. Verse 15. Verse 16. Curse shalt thou be in the city, and curse shalt thou be in the field. So curse shall we be in the city. What city are we in right now? Chicago, right? Chicago, right? Yeah. And again, is there an issue with crime and violence in the black and Hispanic community in Chicago? It, yeah, right? A big issue. A big issue. What about if you go to New York? Is there the same issue there? Everywhere. Everywhere. So these curses will follow us everywhere we go. So it's not a coincidence. If you go to Chicago, L.A., New York, Philadelphia, Miami, Louisiana, New Orleans, it's no coincidence because we are the people of this Bible. That's how we know who we are. We go anywhere on Martin Luther King Drive. A street that was named after the man who fought for the rights of our people. You go to Martin Luther King Street in Louisiana, in Los Angeles, in New York, guess what? It's going to be the same issue going on on that same street. That's right. Why? Because these curses will follow us everywhere because we didn't listen to God. Right. Now what about in the field? What about the cotton fields? Right here, cotton fields. What about in the sugar fields, the tobacco fields, even in the work field? Even on our jobs today, we have to resort to have to organize unions because we're not getting paid enough. We're not getting enough uh, sick leave. We're not getting enough vacation time. Even on our work, on our jobs, we're still cursed there. Working from paycheck to paycheck. That's right. Trying to convince the boss that, hey, I deserve a raise. We don't mean that going in the HR office fighting for an extra five cents an hour. You say, Psh, because that's the reality. I kid you not. I kid you not. The Bible said these things. We would be cursed in the field. Why? Because we didn't keep the commandments. Again, we're showing you that we are the Israelites. We're showing you that we have to bring back the sights. That's right. We're trying to free the captives. Before we can free anybody, we have to free ourselves up here. That's right. Get that. Hold that Romans 12 and 2. It starts up here. Because we can't fathom the oppression. We can't fathom how much we've been destroyed. We went from this to now we destroy as a people. What's your nationality, bro? Native American and Puerto Rican. Native American and Puerto Rican. So 
You know about Native American history? A lot. Okay, so what's the state of Native Americans today? The state of Native Americans is way worse in the country than any other. Right, because you go to the res, it's like third world countries. And even on the reservation, there's a chain of command. The chain of command, and even at its highest, doesn't respect the lowest. Right, even because... Have. Exactly. They got it. They go through it even harder on the reservation. Right. Number, alcoholism is number one in the Native Americans because we have no sight. We have no hope. We have our whole culture taken away from us. We had our whole way of life taken away from us. Now we don't know who he is. Now we resort to living in a two bedroom apartment stacked on top of each other. Get that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Be not what? And be not conformed to this world. So it says, be not conformed to this world. It's like Play-Doh, right? You try to make a sculpture with Play-Doh, you try to form it into something. You're trying to shape it into something. But the Bible says, don't shape your mind after the ways of the world. Don't shape your mind after Christmas, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Because on that day, our Native American and brothers and sisters got slaughtered. But yeah, every year, every year we have a dinner. Have you ever celebrated Thanksgiving? Have you ever celebrated Thanksgiving? Okay, let me ask you this, right? The irony in this, right? Because I asked you, the black, let's deal with black issues for a minute. I'm gonna get back to that, right? Stick with me, right? Now, fair to say it's issues in the, in the black community, right? It's, it's fair to say that black people don't like get justice, right? It's fair to say, right? So, what do we look like every Thanksgiving dinner having a dinner celebrating another's uh, nation oppression as well? Because Native Americans, they got slaughtered by the millions as well. And that's why we celebrate Thanksgiving for the white man victory of him slaughtering the Native Americans. We talk about the oppression of black people, but we celebrate the oppression of our Native American brothers. It's hypocrisy. How can we say we want justice for ourselves, but we celebrate another atrocity that was done on our brothers. So it's fair to say that we should stop celebrating Thanksgiving. How can we say black people get treated unfairly, but they turn around and celebrate Thanksgiving when we look at Thanksgiving and we look at the history behind it and Native Americans were slaughtered through murder, through smallpox, through diseases. They had their nation, their country taken away from them and they brought the black men over here to work. It's hypocrisy. They saw the Native Americans and gave us Christianity. They put our children in boarding schools. Just like they put our children on cotton fields to pick the cotton. They put the Native Americans' children in boarding schools. They cut their hair. They took away their culture. Just like they took away our culture. So what we prove, we go through the same things. But we have to come back to the site of knowing that we are the same people. That's right. But so as far as we, as long as we continue to separate ourselves, call ourselves black, Native American, black, we will never unite. We will never unite. Read it from the top. And be ye not, and be not transformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because everything that's been taught to us has been influenced by this right here. Everything. You think you're pro-black? You ain't pro-black because you celebrate Christmas. You still go to the club. You still pop pills. Bring it out. You still chase hoes. Right. All that is based on this right there. Right. You ain't pro-black. You can't be pro-black because black is the color of your shirt. That's right. Where can I find black? No. Read on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's time to rebrain, reprogram our minds to the truth. But we're going to continue to teach you the truth. We're going to continue to teach more because it's more that we need to be taught. That's right. We've been deceived. We have to wake up. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. 